Hi, welcome back to another video. In this video, we are going to see how you can track ad payment info and ad shipping info on your Shopify store for GA4 using Google Tag Manager containers. This video is divided into two different sections. In the first section, we are going to discuss the prerequisites and in the second one, we are going to see some of the pitfalls that we encounter. For this one, you need to have a Google Tag Manager container, a GA4 property at the Shopify store, and you need to make sure that your GA4 account and your Google Tag Manager is already configured on the Shopify store. For those tutorials, you can click on this link. However, we will configure GA4 in Google Tag Manager from the start. The second thing that you need to know is if you don't have a Shopify Plus account, then unfortunately, you cannot track these events. This can only be tracked if you have access to the slash checkout route. Slash checkout route is only available for the Shopify Plus customers. This is for security reasons, so people don't get user data such as credit card information from the checkout pages. If these two events are really necessary for you, then you have to opt in for GA4 default channel tracking using YouTube and Google's channel. However, doing this without a Shopify Plus account on Google Tag Manager is not an option available right now. However, if you already have a Shopify Plus account, then you can start this video and see how to configure ad shipping info and ad payment info events on your store. Let's head over to our Google Tag Manager container and first configure the GA4 configuration tag so we can track basic events such as page view, user engagement, session start, etc. On your Google Analytics account, you can head over to the admin section on the bottom left corner. From there, in the property column, you can see an option for data streams. Data streams are similar to pipelines which connect your Shopify store with your GA4 account so the data can flow from one point to another. If you already have a data stream, that's well and good. Otherwise, you can click on the blue button on the top right corner to add a stream. Under the web stream that you might have, just copy the measurement ID and head back to the Google Tag Manager web container. We can copy and paste the same variable again and again however it's not very optimized so let's just head over to the variable section and click on the new button on the top right corner we are going to create a constant variable which is user defined so we we don't have to uh, copy and paste the measurement id again and again so let's just paste here and rename it to ga4 measurement id and let's hit save now we have created a variable for measurement id let's go back to the tag managers tag section so we can create a configuration tag for ga4 let's hit new on the top right corner and and for this trigger, we want the tag to fire on all the pages. So we are going to select all pages. And under the tag configuration, you might see that if you have an older Google Tag Manager container, instead of looking at the Google Tag, you might have an option for GA4 configuration tag. Both of them works pretty much the same. However, Google has shifted everything to Google Tag. So we are going to use that. Let's select the Google Tag. And for the ID, we are going to use the GA4 measurement ID that we just created a few minutes ago. And that's all what we need. So this is GTag GA4 configuration tag. You don't have to worry about my spellings because they are not that great as me. Let's hit save. So now we have the configuration tag configured in the website. In the section two, we are going to see what kind of code you need to provide to your developer that they can add to the data layer. And once the developer add this code on the Shopify backend, you will start seeing the events added in the debug window when you have connected the Google Tag Manager web container to your store. You can find a link to those PDFs down in the description where you can just copy and paste all the details and send them to the developer and they will know what to do from there. So let's create a tag assuming that your developer has added that information inside the Shopify backend. Uh, now we are going to create two different triggers. Under the trigger section you can go to the triggers and we are going to create one trigger for ad shipping info and one trigger for ad payment info. Let's hit new and let's create a custom variable. This is going to be called custom underscore ad shipping info let's rename it to custom event ad shipping info hit save and now we need to do the same thing for the payment info event let's hit save perfect uh you might notice that in the ga4 the standard event name are payment ad payment info and ad shipping info however we have added a prefix of custom underscore this is just a precautionary step so we so the over configuration that we have added in the shopify store does not conflict with any built-in tags or any other configuration that the developer might have done these are just uh, necessary you can use some other variable such as gtm underscore or anything that you want let's head back to the tag section so we can create two different tags that are going to be sending this information back to the ga4 however in order to make these events enhanced conversion that means we need to send some users and some event data such as items value shipping tier etc so before doing that we are going to create a variable those will capture all of these details so let's hit new under the user defined variable and by default google has announced a new thing which is called 
Google tag event setting variable. So we are going to use that. Google tags event setting variable is very much similar to how we had universal analytics setting variable. So it just, you have to create one setting variable and you can reuse it in multiple tags. So this just saves us a lot of time. Let's just add some parameters for value, currency, and item. So let's do value, currency, items, uh, shipping tier, payment type. And that's all what we need for these two events. So the value is usually under an e-commerce object where it has its own key value pair. So we are going to create a data layer variable for that. So let's just select that and e-commerce dot value. Anything that you have to capture inside the value, it, anything that you have to capture inside an object is supposed to be used in dot notation. Uh, let's rename this variable to DLV for data layer variable and e-commerce dot value. So now we have created one and now we have to create the second one for the currency. So let's hit new and create the data layer variable for this one. E N C Y. As I mentioned, my spellings are not as great as me, so you have to bear with me on this one. Uh, now we have to capture the items array. The items array is also part of the e-commerce object, so we can use that. Let's go data layer, items, DLB items. Perfect. Now we need to do the same thing for shipping tier and payment type. Let's quickly create these two data layer variables so we can get to the next step. E-commerce.shipping tier and this one will be e-commerce.shipping tier. And the last one we have to do is payment.type underscore. It's going to be e-commerce.payment underscore type. Payment underscore type is a variable that tells Google Tag Manager what kind of payment method the user has used and shipping Shipping tier is if you have different kind of shipping tiers such as standard or express and this is the variable that are going to use for that. If a variable is predefined in GA4 then you will see a check mark next to that otherwise if you are going to use a custom parameter then it will not have a check mark next to that. As we have created this, we can just save this one. We can call it GTAG event settings EEC event parameter. That just means a Google tag event setting enhanced e-commerce event parameter. So let's save that and go back to the tag section so we can finally create two tags that will fire the events. So let's hit new. Uh, for the trigger, uh, let's just add payment info event first and then we are going to add the shipping info. Uh, we are going to select the GA4 event tag so we can send the data back to the GA4 account. And the measurement ID, we can use the same one that we created a few minutes ago. And the event name is add payment info. You might have noticed that when we are sending the event back, we are using the standard event. And now we don't have to add all of those event parameters one by one. We can just refer to the same event setting parameter and it will automatically populate all the events. Let's Let's rename this one to a GA4 custom enhanced e-commerce event add payment info. Let's save this tag. So now we have created one tag that will fire the events. Now let's just create the second one for add shipping info. Let's click new or the top right corner for the trigger. We are going to select the shipping info and for the analytics tag, we are going for the GA4 event. The process is pretty much the same. We are going to use the measurement ID and the event name is add shipping info. And for the event parameters, we are going to refer back to the same event stack. So we have all of these parameters, so that's well and good. Let's rename this to add shipping info and we are good to go. Once the developer has added the data layer, you can test everything using the preview mode of Google Tag Manager to see if everything is working all right. Once you can confirm all the events are triggering fight, you can publish the Google Tag Manager container. So all the changes are live and not in the draft mode. So let's just publish them. Uh, GA4 checkout event. Unfortunately, I do not have access to a Shopify Plus account. Therefore, we can't do any kind of testing for this one. However, following the direct mentioned in the video will help you to track all of these events in the Shopify plus account not in the general one uh, if you are looking for more details on GA4 event tracking you can refer here